Are you ready? Me do what? To war. To war? Worship God. My hands, my hands are high, my feet are low. This is how I worship God. My hands are high, my feet are low. This is how I worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Hey, Joe. Hey, what? You ready? For what? For what? For what? Worship God. My hands are high, my feet are low. This is how I worship God. My hands are high, my feet are low. This is how we worship God. Worship God. What worship God? Worship God. What worship God? As we worship, worship God, worship God in the beginning, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make your own motions to worship God. Make sure to record yourselves and to send it to our pastors. We'll be waiting for many, many of your body worship. And remember throughout the week that there are many different ways to worship God. Worship God, worship God, worship God, worship God. See you guys. Bye. We going on a road trip, road trip, road trip. Uh-huh. I'm packed and I'm ready to go. Woo. Where we going, Cali? Hey, where we going, Cali? Good morning, church. Welcome to Sunday service. Have you guys tried to worship God? Worship God? Worship God? Have you tried that? Yes. Wherever you go, whenever, whatever you do, we need to worship God and praise God. And today we're going to learn 5th, 6th 
seventh commandment. You guys are ready? Okay, before we start, I'm gonna pray. Put your hands together, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We commit this time to you, Father. We want to worship you with all our hearts. Please open our eyes and ears to listen to your word and help us to live out with your words. Father, we love you because you loved us first. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Fall, Gen 2! Today, we're going to go over how to attend church online service. Number one, get out of bed, get dressed. And number two, bring a Bible and offering and please write down your prayer request. For number three, make sure to follow along worship and sing loud and proud. And for number four, make sure to participate in everything with your whole heart. Have a great service. Have a great service. Focus on God 
and uh, doing whatever you can to uh, make sure that you're really focused and giving your time to God. Um, you know, you, your time and your heart and uh, your attitude is what God sees. So during service, I want you to, I know it's, it's really tough with uh, online service because nobody's really looking at you, but you know, you yourself and God is always looking at you. So, you know, with that in mind, uh, is making it more into one-on-one -on -one, um, service with you and God. And it, it could be a lot more intimate and it could be a lot more personal if you take it that way. Okay? So, have a great Sunday service. Dear God, here is our offerings to you with thanks and giving. We know that our offerings would make you happy. Please use this offering to worship you need it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey friends! So, I don't know if any of you are up this early, but it's about 6 a.m. here, and we're halfway to the Niagara Falls! I'm excited! Hold up! Do you hear that? Is that an owl? In the city, I've never even heard an owl or even seen one! I've never even slept in a sleeping bag before outside! Guys, you know me by now, right? Well, I think you do. One thing I can stand is when someone Namely, my little brother takes my snacks, eats them, doesn't tell me, acts like it never happened. What am I supposed to eat in here now? I'm just about finished all my snacks. Oh, oh, is anyone hungry? I don't even know where we can get food out here. Nope, no way I'm going for food out here. I'm so hungry. Do you have a friend that you can call every single time? And they'll answer, well, that's my buddy Chip. Callie? Hey, Chip. I know it's extremely early, but hey, I thought I'd just call you. What you up to? Sleeping. What's up? Chip. I know you have a new sister, right? And like tons of other brothers and sisters, have they ever done anything to you that got you so mad? All the time. Just last night, they broke my toy. I was so angry. And they eat all your food and break your toys. I think my road trip would be so much better without this little guy munching off my food. It's that bad? Yes, Chip. He takes my toys, takes my snacks. I know you love your snacks, especially... Teddy Cramp Cookies! Yep, but I have a story I want to share with you. It's time for our Bible story. Last week we learned the third and the fourth commandments that God gave Moses for the people of Israel. So far, commandments one through four have all been about how we can love God better. But God gave us rules for how we can love others better too. I'm excited. The fifth commandment is to honor your father and your mother. Is that like listening to them? That's part of it, yes. When we honor our parents, we listen to them because we trust that they know what's best for us. It's our way to show we love them for loving us so much. Actually, they do love us a lot. They sure do. And they want to make sure we don't get hurt. The sixth commandment says that we should not do anything to harm someone else. Even if they're really mean? Even if they're really mean. God is not happy when humans hurt each other. That's why God gave us the sixth commandment. That's commandment number seven. The seventh commandment says that people who are married to each other should keep their promises to each other. That's a nice rule. It really is. So when we honor our parents, don't hurt others, and keep our promises to each other, we show our love to God. How? Because God loves all of us. So when we love each other, we are in fact loving God.
Even my brother? Even your brother. So I didn't tell you how the story ended. My brother broke my toy and I got mad. But of course. He said he was sorry and it was a mistake. I could tell he was really sorry. So I told him it's okay, it's just a toy. But get this, my mom was so proud of me for being a big brother, she promised to replace my broken toy with a new one. Wow, that's so awesome. Well, maybe I can be a good big sister too. Maybe my brother was really hungry. Good point, Chip. Thank you for reminding me that we obey God by loving our families. Do you mind if I go back to sleep? Oh, of course, buddy. Thanks for chatting with me, even when it's like six in the morning. See ya. So friends, I have some making up to do with my little bro. It's really early and I think I'll get a couple more hours of sleep before everyone gets up. Maybe we will get something amazing for breakfast. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so glad I got to talk to Chip this morning. It helped me remember that loving my family is what God wants me to do. What are some ways you show your families you love them? Drop a comment and I'll get back to you. <sighs> After a quick nap. Ladies! Jam 2, we are on a road trip. Third week, we are still in the Mount Sinai. The road trip that Moses was there on that mountain, God spoke to Moses. He wrote down Ten Commandments. So until now, we learn about one, two, three, four commandments. Today, we're going to learn three more commandments from the Bible. Please grab your Bible, turn to Exodus chapter 20, verses uh, 12, 13, 14. Exodus chapter 20, verses 12, 13, 14. Three verses. So, number fifth. What's fifth? Number five commandment. Let's read verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Wow. In the middle, one, two, three, four, five, five. Among Ten Commandments, you have to obey your parents. That's the commandment. You know, we try hard to obey our parents, but sometimes you guys complain. Sometimes you feel like it's unfair, mom. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Sometimes you don't have to. It's hard to obey parents. Because you have your will, you want to do this, but our parents, they know better than you guys. They are praying to God, they do their best to protect you and guide you and help you. So if God asks us to obey our parents, this is the commandment, we have to obey God. That's the fifth commandment. So from this week, no, whole life, entire of your life, you need to obey your parents. Don't make excuse. Mom, okay, I will do after I finish I this. Mom, I'm going to do this after this. Mom, if you give me this, I'm going to do. Dad, if you buy from me, then I'm going to do. Unless you do, I'm going to do. No, that is not obedience. You need to obey means without any excuse, without any laziness, Without getting something, you need to obey your parents. Remember, no if, no unless. If parents do something for me, then I will do. If you give me this, if you buy for me this, then I'm going to do no more. God's commandment, just obey to your parents. That's God's will for you. And also, this is not an option. You have to obey your parents. Okay? Then... Six, Ten Commandment, number six, verse 13. You shall not murder, which means don't kill others. For you guys, you know, we don't really kill others. Don't hurt others. So I have my friend, he is a really close friend. I love him, I like him. Sometimes we are being rude and unkind to your siblings, your brothers and sisters. You know. We do know, we do understand each other. We love one another. We love our parents. We love our brothers and sisters. But 
where you are at home all day long with your siblings. You fight, you argue, you know, but why don't you not to try to get hurt others? Saying bad word, bad behavior, that kind of things. We don't really kill others, do not murder. That's the sixth commandment, but don't hurt others. That is the way that we can apply this sixth commandment. Remember, fifth, obey your parents. Sixth, don't kill others, which means don't get hurt others. Okay? Being patient, nice and gentle, kind to others, parents and teachers and friends and siblings. Amen. Number seven, what is that? Look at verse 14. You shall not commit adultery. Adultery means it's you can't cheat others. You know, if you have a wife or a husband, you have to love your wife and husband. Don't look other, you know, boys and girls. It means the Bible says you shall not commit adultery means for us, for you guys, you're not getting married, you know, you're not married yet, you're still young. That means, how could we apply this seventh commandment? You shall not commit adultery. That means you have to get married with the mature and sincere Christian. The boys remember, you need to get married with the mature and beautiful Christian. So how are you going to apply seventh commandment? You shall not commit the adultery. That means you need to get married with godly Christian woman, the boys, the girls. You need to remember, I'm going to get married with the man who is very mature and love God. I strongly, I pray for you guys. There is only man and woman get married. If you go to school, some teachers, some friends, Hey, no, don't think like that. We have so many genders. No, the Bible clearly says that. Boy and girl, man and woman, God created. So God commands us, get married with boys, have to get married with the girls. The girls have to get married with the boys. So man and woman, that's it. So how are you going to apply? I'm going to get married with sincere, godly woman. I'm going to get married with the sincere godly man. That's how we apply the seventh commandment. All right? So today we learned three more commandments. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Obey your parents. Do not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Then three of them, it's about the love. Love others. Love your families. Right? So today's big idea is we can obey God by loving our families. Amen. So this week, please remember, love your parents, obey your parents, love your siblings. Gentle, kind, nice. This is the way to obey 5th, 6th, 7th commandment. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us today. The Father, that we want to obey our parents. No matter what, we just want to obey your word. And also, we don't want to get hurt others, our friends and family members. And also, help us to remember all the gentle kids when they grow up. Help them to meet sincere, godly men and women. Be a godly man and woman and get married with godly men and women. Father, thank you again that you speak to us and told us what we need to do today. Help us to live out with your words all day long in our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Kids, week three of our series is something you have to reflect by yourself. Uh, we have our own ways to deal with uh, today's topic. And topic one is, what are some things God wants us to do when someone upsets us? So if you look at today's sermon, passages you do, you have to have uh, a little grace. And that means to love other people despite their bad habits or their mistakes. Um, 
in personalities. So for example, if your brother or sister keeps taking something from your room without your permission, I want you guys to show grace and not immediate anger and explain to them why you're upset. Now, the second topic is why is it important to keep promises? Uh, when you keep promises with other people, you build a thing called trust. And if you break that trust by breaking promises, you can possibly lose that relationship in the long run. Um, over time, if you don't keep promises to your parents or to your friends, you're going to lose that trust in that relationship. And it applies to your trust with God as well. If you don't do things that God wants us to do as Christians, you can possibly break that trust with God. And it might be simple now, but in the long run, it's going to affect your relationship with God. So please reflect on these topics today and pray about them. And I'll see you next week. Okay? Bye, Jim 2. Look, chapter 10, verse 27. Amen. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10 verse 27. Amen.